All right, everyone. Today we're going to be doing conceptual questions or multiple choice questions in this chapter with universal gravitation. Letting you guys know on the AP exam, there's a lot of multiple choice questions in this chapter. They really like these ratio kind of questions with variables, especially for this chapter. So uh, let's look at some of these. First question, a small ball is near a large solid, uni a solid sphere of uniform density. How would the gravitational force on each object change if all the mass of the sphere were concentrated at the center of the sphere? Uh, a, it would be exactly the same. B, it would be close to the same, uh, same force. C, the force would be different. So what we should know is right now, let's just look at the sphere as it is. We're going to have a certain force of gravity uh, attracting each other. We know that there are, the same, there are a certain distance r away. But what we want to think about now is if this sphere collapses in on itself and becomes a lot denser and smaller, what would happen to this? So that means that the sphere is going to shrink, let's say, to a size like this. It has the same amount of mass, but it's condensed a lot like that. And what we should know is because the mass doesn't change and how far it is from each other also doesn't change, even though this collapses in on itself, the mass doesn't change, the radius doesn't change. So if we look at the force of gravity equation, g, m, m1, m2, r squared, everything stays the same. So that means that the force of gravity would be exactly the same. Okay. And I also want to let you guys know this is how the this is how uh, black holes work. Is uh, they're first like a big sun like this, and then they get really really dense. And all that does is if a planet is orbiting a sun like this and it collapses and becomes a black hole, nothing changes. Everything just becomes colder. Okay, so black holes don't suck uh, because they have the same amount of math. Nothing changes. It just becomes colder. Okay, okay let's move on. Uh, let's look at this. And yes, they love questions like this where you're, um, you're trying to see when one out, when one Variable changes, how does it affect other parts of the equation? So it says Saturn has about 100 times the mass of the Earth and is about 10 times further from the Sun than the, than, uh, than, gra than the Earth. Sorry. Compared to the acceleration of the Earth, how great is the acceleration of Saturn due to the Sun's gravitation? So let's look at this. Uh, what, how great is the acceleration? So we should know, we should be looking at this equation. Force of gravity is equal to G, uh, mass 1, mass 2. Uh, radius squared. So, and in this situation, what we're going to do is I'm going to change this force of gravity. So I'm going to change this force of gravity to be m1 acceleration of gravity. So we, we're trying to compare the acceleration of the Earth with uh, what the acceleration of Saturn is. So we know that if this is mass of Saturn, and m2 is the mass of the Sun, or that, what we know is whatever the mass of Saturn is, it's not going to affect its orbit because the mass of Saturn or the mass of anything is just going to cancel out. So that's not going to affect its orbit. However, what we do know is um, the mass of Saturn is 10 times further away. And if this is 10 times further, what that means is this side of the equation is going to be changing by a factor of 100 or decreasing by a factor of 100. So if Saturn is 10 times further away, that means the acceleration of gravity that Saturn experiences from the sun is going to be 100 times less. So that's why this is going to be E. And if that was confusing, please watch it back. Uh, but we will be doing more examples of this. So if it was confusing, hopefully it'll make more sense as we do more problems. Uh, okay, let's, let's look at this. If the mass of the Earth doubled and everything on the Earth also doubled the mass, but the size of the Earth stayed the same, how would the acceleration due to gravity at the surface change? Okay, so let's kind of look at this. There's a mass of Earth. There's this person here. The person experiencing an acceleration of gravity around 10 meters per second squared. But now what happens is the Earth doubles in mass. The size stays, stays the same, right? Every uh, Everything on the Earth also doubles, but the size stays the same. So it's twice as massive, so it's just a lot more dense. And then this person over here, he also gets twice as massive. Okay, this is a little M over here. 
And now let's think about how this is going to change, the acceleration of this person. So again, we should be looking at this equation, force of gravity is equal to g, let's say mass of person, mass of earth, divided by how far they are from each other squared. And since we're looking for the acceleration due to gravity of the person or an object, mass of person times acceleration gravity. Again, we notice that even though the mass of the person doubles by two, uh, it's just going to cancel out, so it doesn't matter that the mass of the person uh, doubles. We see that the mass of the Earth also doubles, so this is going to change by a factor too, and the size stays the same, so nothing changes here. So we see that this part of the equation increases by a factor of two. And what that tells us is this side of the equation has to also increase by a factor of two, meaning the acceleration of gravity becomes twice as much, or in this case, it's going to be 20 meters per second squared. So it becomes two times greater is the correct answer. Again, watch it again. I know a lot of students have a hard time with this, but try to do it again on your own if you had a hard time. Uh, but we'll be doing a lot of these. Okay, a satellite is orbiting Earth. If the suddenly doubles its mass, would the satellite's orbit be affected? Again, let's look at this equation. Force of gravity equals g, mass of satellite, mass of Earth, r squared. So we might think, okay, if it's doubling its mass, right, then that means the force of gravity is going to increase by a factor of two. And that's true. However, we're not looking for the force of gravity, we're looking at how would the satellite's orbit be affected. So yes, the force of gravity of the satellite would change and of, of the Earth, but let's change this force of gravity to be mass times acceleration of gravity. And what we notice is, if we double this by 2, again, it's just going to cancel out. And if it cancels out, that means the acceleration will be the same, the velocity will be the same, the period will be the same. So the orbit won't be affected. It will still be moving around at the same rate and the same way, no matter what the mass of the satellite is going to be. The mass cancels out, so it doesn't matter. So, uh... If the satellite selling doubles, if mass, would the size over be affected? No, it won't be affected. Okay, let's look at this. Rank the following unknown planets in order from the highest to lowest value of acceleration of gravity on the surface. Okay, so we're trying to find what the acceleration of gravity is on the surface. Again, we're going to be looking at this equation. Force of gravity equals g, mass, uh, mass 1, mass of planet, I guess, divided by uh, how far they are squared. And mass 1 is just like any object on a planet. I'm just going to call it like this person mass 1. But any object is going to experience the same acceleration, whether it's a rock, whether it's a box, just like Earth, everything on Earth experiences 9.8 meters per second squared. So uh, M1 is just any generic object on this planet. And since we're trying to find the acceleration, Again, I'm going to change this force of gravity to be m1 times acceleration of gravity. And since m1 just cancels out, I'm just going to ignore that. Yeah. So um, let's look at um, let's look at this first one. So this first one has twice the amount of mass and twice the amount of radius. What that means is that means this is going to change by a factor of 2 divided by 4. So this will make it change by a half. So I'm just going to put 1 half the gravity here. 1 half. Okay. And I'm going to kind of do this with each one of these. Now let's look at the next planet. Whoops. R squared. The next planet, uh, let me move this, space this out a little bit. R squared is 4m and 4r. So this mass of the planet changes by a factor of 4, and it gets 4 times further. So this would be 4 divided by 16. So that means acceleration of gravity would change by 1 fourth. So this would change by 1 divided by 4. Okay, so that one is looking to be the least amount, or the acceleration will be the least at that point. Let's look at the next one. 4m and 2r. So this mass, the mass of the planet increased by a factor of 4. Radius increases by a factor of 2. So that means it's be 4 over 4, which means acceleration gravity won't change. It's just 1 over 1. Okay. 
Uh, now let's look at the last one. Last one is 2m and 4r. That means this is going to change numeric factor of 2 and denominator 16th. So this would change by 1 8. So it says rank the following unknown planets in order from highest to lowest value of acceleration of gravity. So which one's going to have the highest acceleration of gravity? That's going to be this third one. That's C. And then which one has the next highest? Uh, that would be this first one. That would be A. And then the second one, which is B. And then the last one, which is D. I hope that made sense. Uh, There's a pretty good overview of how we're going to be doing problems like this. I believe we're going to do one more. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So let's look at this. A satellite in circular orbit of radius r around a planet. Uh, around a planet. A planet. <laughs> I need to change that. A planet has an orbital period t. If the planet had one fourth as much mass, the orbital period of the satellite would be blank. Okay. So this one is a bit uh, a bit challenging. Or it might just take a little while, but let's see how we can do this. So we're looking for the period and how it would be how it would change when the mass changes. So again, force of gravity is equal to g. I'm going to say mass of satellite and mass of planet divided by how far from they are to each other squared. I'm going to change this force of gravity to be force centripetal. So I'm going to make it m mass of satellite v squared divided by r. Mass of satellite cancels out, one of the R's cancel out. So let me kind of erase these things. Okay. And now since we're looking for the period, I'm going to change this velocity to be, we should know velocity is 2 pi R divided by T. So I'm going to change this to be 4 pi squared R squared divided by T squared. Okay. So... Uh, what we should know is, mm, if this mass changes by one fourth, so this mass is going to change by one fourth, that means this side of the equation changed by a factor of a fourth. We want this side to also change by a factor of a fourth, and we want to know how the period would change. So if this side changes by a factor of a fourth, and this is t squared, that means we need this uh, t to double because it's squared in order for it to uh, to become one fourth. So in this way, what would happen is the period would increase by a factor of two. And that should make sense. If this, if this planet or object here becomes smaller, that means that there won't be as much uh, force between them and means it won't be going as fast. So it should be either 2t or 4t, but in this case, we find that it's I hope that made sense. Uh, if not, please watch it again. There are a lot of questions like this on the AP exam where it's asking you to manipulate variables and see how when one variable changes, what the other variable is going to be. So this is very important to know. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you with the next one with artificial gravity.